And a new book out this week offers a different window into the life of singer Linda Ronstadt, who has sold millions of records. She's performed over four decades and made history as the first woman to have three consecutive platinum albums. Jeffrey Brown spoke with Ronstadt recently for our Arts and Culture series, Canvas. In 1987, Linda Ronstadt, one of the biggest pop stars of her era, did something extraordinary, recording an album of traditional Mexican music. It was called Canciones de Mi Padre, Songs of My Father, and looked back to music that had moved and influenced her since childhood. It would become a surprise, barrier, and record-breaking hit. Is it true that the record companies didn't want you to record the Mexican? Oh, they were horrified. They were horrified? I was oblivious, but I also knew I had the clout to do it. And it didn't occur to me that it would be successful or not successful. I just had to know I had to make the record. If I didn't make the record, I would die. At her San Francisco home today, some things are different. Beginning in the early 2000s, Ronstadt's movement slowed, her speech at times slurred by a condition first diagnosed as Parkinson's, later as progressive supranuclear palsy, a rare disorder with no known cure. Her favorite activity now at age 76, reading. They sing so the subsequent generations won't forget what the current generations endured or dreamed. Or but delighted. with a sharp mind and a plentiful sense of humor, she's still returning to her ancestral home. Physically, as in the 2019 documentary, The Sound of My Voice. And in a new book titled Feels Like Home, a song for the Sonoran borderlands. Co-written with Lawrence Downs and featuring photographs by Bill Steen, it's a celebration, complete with recipes, of place, including Tucson, where she grew up. And of people, past and present, on both sides of a beautiful but harsh border. Well, just my impressions of the desert as I was traveling in it with my family and of the years that I've gone back and visited. Mm -hmm. It's a hard trip. It's a five-hour trip through real mountainous terrain. It's beautiful. But boy, if, you, if your car gets in trouble on the road, you better hope that somebody comes by. Throughout the book, traditional song and dance, then and now. Spanish was what you sang in and English was what you spoke. And the music of her mixed Mexican and European ancestry, a great-grandfather had come from Germany to Mexico in 1839, and her own upbringing in a family that loved all kinds of music, from traditional mariachi to opera. My, my mother played banjo, ukulele. She played the piano. My dad played the guitar and sang. I learned all the songs. I don't know why. It was learned by osmosis. She was 18 in 1964 when she left home for Los Angeles and became part of an exciting rock scene. But as she tells it, it didn't come easily to her. You know, I, I watched the recent documentary about your life, and, and there are people in there like David Geffen. He said that early on you didn't have a lot of confidence. That you didn't, didn't have any. You didn't have any. Later on, I didn't have confidence either. <laughs> I was very consistent in that way. But I got there, you know to her, to a place that satisfied me. Everyone else heard something very special, a voice that stood out in songs like You're No Good. And Blue Bayou. Twelve Grammys, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, a National Medal of Arts, the Kennedy Center Honors. She's won them all. And was a major celebrity, also known for her one-time relationship with California governor and presidential candidate Jerry Brown. Never known as a songwriter herself, her strength was the ability to shape a song and make it her own. I'll, I'll start to sing a song, I'll, a new song, and I'll think, well, I'll, it'll be like this or like this in my imagination. When I actually get there and to start to sing it, stuff comes up that I never would have thought of. I just, it's like watching myself sing. I go, oh, she did that. She did that? <laughs> Not I did that, she did that? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's somebody working in there in my brain that doesn't consult me before, just does it. 
And sometimes it's really good, and sometimes it's really awful. <laughs> but Ronstadt always wanted more when it came to the music she was singing, and she regularly and bravely stepped way out of her comfort zone. She recorded three albums of American songbook standards with legendary arranger and conductor Nelson Riddle. Someone to watch. She appeared on stage and film in the Gilbert and Sullivan classic, The Pirates of Penzance. My ambition was for the music. I thought there's certain music, if I could master it, then I'd be standing on firm ground. I really felt that way about Mexican music. I wanted to sing it so badly. At the time, many fans weren't even aware of her Mexican heritage. She says she wanted to change that. Well, I wanted to own it. I wanted to possess it musically because it, had, it was such, a, such emotional music. It had moved me so much to listen to it. She was performing the Mexican songs in the 2000s when she began to feel her voice and body changing. It was suddenly hard to do things that had really been easy to do for me before. In her backyard garden, we talked about those changes. You knew it was time to quit? Yeah. And all, all my, you know, they say your life passes before your eyes, before you die. My whole concert life flashed before my eyes when I was on stage doing that show. I knew it was the last one. I don't miss performing, but I miss singing. Did it make you feel differently about yourself, about who you were? I'm still the same person, I'm just diminished. <laughs> Talking is really hard, and pulling my thoughts together, I can see them. But when I go to talk, it gets, get, gets jumbled, and that's Parkinsonism. Mm -hmm. But the good part is that I have a lot of help, and I have good friends. I have really good friends. Desperado, why don't you come to me since She also continues to have millions of fans. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in San Francisco. Oh, hot one, I know you got your reasons. Not diminished at all, Linda Ronstadt is a portrait of courage.